Langford, welcome to my channel. In today's video, I want to go over the basics of adding texture to a flower image. So I haven't done one of these videos in a long time, and I realize that I get requests a lot about the easiest way to add texture. So there are many ways that you can add textures to an image in Photoshop, but I'm going to show you two really simple ways that I think um, are easy to use, even if you don't use Photoshop. So I hope you'll try these and um, enjoy this video. So let's get started. So this first image was a taken was taken of a flower underwater. It was submerged. And I took it with some camera movement and wanted it to be really dreamy. So you can see this is without the texture. There was a lot of markings from the water, from the vase, the light, and it just did not give the final look that I wanted for this very artistic flower image. So adding a texture and then smoothing out and reducing the opacity just gave it that final look that I needed. So I'm gonna show you how I did that in just a second. Let's look at one more example. So this is an image where I first, this was the original, and it's really soft and pretty, but I thought it would be nice to add some additional texture to it to give it a more artistic look and just something a little bit different. So that was another example. So adding texture can help dis help soften a busy background. It can help if you have a distracting background. It also is just a way to add again some artistic qualities to your photographs, especially if they're flowers. You can add textures though to any type of images, so don't let the style of image stop you from trying to add textures. All right, so let's get started. I wanna start with this first image and I'm going to show you two methods today to add texture. So the first thing that we need to do when we're getting started is we need to duplicate our background layer. To do that, you can right click and hit duplicate layer or you can use the keyboard shortcut command or control J. Now the reason I duplicate it is so that I still have my original image here in case I mess up or I need it. You can even turn it off if you know you don't want to use it. So we've got our copy here. The next thing I'm going to do is go find a texture to use. So you can purchase texture files. Um, you can also get free textures and I will include in the description of this email several resources for textures. I, um, I love textures so I have quite a collection here. So I keep them in an external folder, textures, and then I have all the different brands and the different options. So today I thought we'd play with some textures from a company, Flypaper Textures, and I really like their options. So for this image, I want to add something that's still within the background colors. So often I don't want to change the background color. I just want to smooth it out and give it an artistic look. So I'm going to bring this spring equinox. I think this one would be really pretty. I'm just dragging it right over. We'll get the file. We'll drag it over and drop it on top of our Photoshop image. Now we're just going to snap it, drag these corners, and pop it into place. Just drag it over. There we go. Click Enter. So if you think about this, think about these like sheets of paper. We have our background piece of paper, which is our first image, and now we've added this solid piece of paper over top. So we need to reveal the flower that's underneath. The first way to do that is with the opacity slider. We can bring the opacity of that paper down. So I like to go somewhere between probably 30 to 40%, somewhere in the middle. I think that looks really nice. It's, it's doing what I wanted to the background, but there's too much of it on our flower. So the easy way to fix that is applying a mask. Now applying a mask does not have to be scary. It's really, really easy. Come down and click this little mask option down in the bottom right corner of your screen. Once you click that, it's gonna give you this white box. Now come over and you should have black paint right here on the left side of your screen and you want to grab the brush tool. Now I do recommend, if this is the first time you've used brushes in a while, to come up here in the upper left corner and let's select the soft round brush. It's under general brushes. Now you also want to select the opacity of your brush. And I'm going to go ahead and start at 100%. 
Now we can see that it's bringing back the detail. Now to change the size of your brush, you can use your bracket keys to make your brush larger or smaller. What I encourage you to do at 100% is to go around the middle of your flower petals. So we're just going to come in and click around the middle area. We're not going to get near the edges. After you've done that first kind of swoop, we're going to take our opacity down to 40, 50, somewhere around there. And now we can come in and get closer around the edges where we're just kind of removing that texture, bringing back the details in our image. So I'm going to continue to go all around, bringing back some of those details. And if you get too close, you can always, so we see we're just coming down here, bringing some of it back. If you get too close, all you have to do is flip your brush to white and you can come back over your edges. So that's a trick. Once I'm done, I like to flip it to white. I'm going to increase the opacity, maybe close to 60%, make my brush kind of large, and I'm just going to go around these edges just to soften and make sure that the texture blends in really nice with my image. Just pop a little bit of that texture back. So if you're new to masking, black, when you're on the black brush, it's going to reveal what's underneath. So it's revealing our flower. When we flip it to white, it is revealing what's on this layer. So it's actually hiding the flower and it's bringing out our texture. So just a little bit on how masks work. Okay, so now we can see this was the before and this was the after. And you can continue to kind of modify, um, play with your opacity, bring it down. Maybe I want to bring it lower and kind of move a little bit more on these stems. You can pop it with your trackpad or mouse, or you can brush. Okay, let's look at a second option. So with this image, I want to show you a different way, and this would be if you're a little more comfortable with tools in Photoshop. We're going to start by duplicating our layer. And now what I'm going to do is come over to select and I'm going to try to select the subject. Now there are lots of ways to do selections. We can also come over to this menu on the left and try the object selection tool. This was just updated and it is when you hover over or you can do a square box or rectangle box. It should select our object for us. Oh, perfect. It did a great job. So that's under right over here on the left, object, object selection tool, and then you can draw and it will fill it in for you. So now that we have that selection, we're going to do command J on our keyboard. That is putting our selection in a single layer all by itself. Now I'm going to go back to my texture file and I want to find a texture that's going to be really interesting with this image. And I'm thinking something um, a little bit different. So I think I like that. This is a frise, so it's a really thick, kind of like a painting. So let's just try this one. So I'm going to drag it on top of the image. And again, we're just going to pop it into place, bring it all the way over, click enter. And now we want to do a different step here. We want to take our cut out of the tulip, this layer one, and we're going to move it on top of our texture. There we go. Now we can come down to our texture layer and we can still reduce the opacity. So I'm going to bring back a little bit of the qualities of the original image. So I'm going to just take it down again. My sweet spots usually around about 30%. Now our flower still looks a little bit like it's been cut out and pasted, doesn't it? So we don't want that. So what we want to do now is go ahead and add our mask. And I'm going to grab the brush and let's take the opacity down. Maybe we'll start around 15 or 14 percent. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to go over the edges of our tulip here and we're just softening the edges, bringing back. and Just kind of softening that detail around the edges. And we can make the brush smaller and we can even increase the opacity. 
And you'll see as we go around, it's just softening very, very lightly. It's hardly noticeable, but it's getting rid of that line because we don't, we don't want it to look like a cutout. Just come around and keep softening. There we go. That's looking better. Now this side's a little bit heavier, so I'm going to go ahead and increase the opacity up to maybe about 50%. There we go. Just removing that edge so that it looks really, really natural. Come around here. What this is doing is it's bringing that texture back around the image so it doesn't really look like a cutout. Now, why would I use this method over the other method? Well, I would use this method, um, one, sometimes you have something tricky with lots of details and you're going to have a hard time masking the texture. So this would be an option where you could select the object and then mask around it. Some people also prefer to work with a selection like this. So it's just a different way to apply a texture. So now we can see um, this would be without the mask and let me take off the background copy and this is with the mask applied. OK, so just a, a different technique. We can still modify our um, amount of texture so I can increase it. I can decrease it a little bit. So you've got those options. All right, let's do one more together. So for this image, I'm going to go ahead and do command or control J, duplicate the background. Now I'm going to come straight over to my textures and let's see if we can find one here that we really like. I want something with a little bit of the burgundy, a um, little bit of those green colors, something kind of different. Um, let's go ahead and try that Prosperio. That may be really interesting. Um, there's also this one. Hmm. Let's go ahead and try this one. OK, so I'm going to drag it on top. Now, this background was pretty nice in this image. I like the bokeh, but maybe just a little tiny bit of texture can go sometimes a long way. So I'm going to take this opacity down pretty low, like to about 20 percent. Now, I hardly need to mask this. I'll go ahead and add the mask and make sure that I'm on black. Go to my brush and I'm going to take the opacity um, probably about 50 percent. And all I'm going to do is just kind of pop in the center of this main flower, maybe just a little bit in that center, but I really want it to look very artistic. So I want to leave the texture around the outside, around this petal. And I like that it's adding just this texture and detail. Now, if I wanted at a very low opacity, I'm going to get a really large brush and I'm just going to try to bring back a little bit of the bokeh that's under here. So just a tiny bit. We can go over it with our brush a couple of times and see how I'm bringing that back, but I'm still keeping the texture around the image. So it's a way to kind of combine. So if we look at before and now after, we've just softly added a little bit of texture. All right, so easy ways to add some texture, especially to a flower image. You can also use textures in landscape images, street images. The, the options are endless. Again, in the video description, I will include some of my favorite places to purchase textures or to download free textures. Thanks so much, everybody. If you enjoyed this video, please click subscribe and like. That helps me out as I continue to spend time to make videos for you guys. Thanks so much, everybody. Have a great day.